back to Black Box Trading. I'm your host, JT. And here on the channel, we focus on crypto fundamental and technical analysis. And today I've got a very special guest. I've got uh, Z, who is big in the ordinal space. We're going to talk about what we see as far as trends in BRC20s. We're going to talk about uh, uh, a lot of different ordinal projects and uh, kind of determine what we think is going to be some really strong contenders moving forwards into the new year. Before we do that, just a quick little uh, note. If you want to go down to the link in the description and check out blackbox.pro, that is BLK, BOX.pro, you can sign up and get your free Bitcoin trading bot. Buy the bottoms and sell the tops. Never miss a move again with Blackbox. Z, how's it going? I'm good, man. How are you? Happy ETF day, I guess. Yeah, happy ETF day. Yeah, at the time we're recording this video, Bitcoin in spot form exists on the New York Stock Exchange. It's pretty, uh, it still doesn't Amazing. feel real. It's weird. Like, even when it happened, I was like, okay, cool, it happened. And then it took a while to realize, oh shit, Bitcoin's on the stock exchange. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> took a that's while insane. To that. Like, yeah, for especially for people that have been for a long time in this space, you know, feeling so degen doing this stuff. And right now it's like, everybody's legitimizing it pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> makes it feel good. Yeah, the real world is saying Bitcoin's a thing and it's not going to yeah. go anywhere. So that gives staying power and confidence to the no coiners to maybe Absolutely. one day become a coiner. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. And actually, so, speaking of Bitcoin, we have yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff happening on the network itself. Yes. Yeah. The network is uh, blowing up. Um, if you're not familiar with what's going on in the ordinal space, you may have wondered why your Bitcoin transactions have been getting very expensive. <laughs> It's because of degenerates like us playing and flipping JPEGs and JSON files on the network. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So let's, uh, I'm going to hand over the screen to you and uh, let's talk about some of these, uh, these inscriptions, these ordinal inscriptions on the blockchain. Yeah. So I'm guessing since people are watching your channel, they already know stuff about ordinals and the JSON files that we, we're going to discuss today. Uh, but I think 2024 is pretty going to be like the come out party for Ordinals. So I think yeah. that itself is going to be a massive narrative in a potential crypto bull run, because it seems like we're going to get one, especially now with the ETF. And Ordinals that are based on, obviously, the blockchain of Bitcoin, I think by itself is going to be huge. Uh, yeah. I think there's no doubt about it already. We're seeing more and more people getting interested. Even the good old Ethereum NFT guys are jumping um, into the, our space. And I think we're still relatively early. And there are quite a few trends that uh, I personally believe and you know, people in the space also that I talk with that are going to be very strong and are uh, going to play out um, this year. Uh, so that's what you know. I want to talk about today because people might think, oh, we missed this. You know, or no, they already pumped so much. You know, but the thing is that they move in cycles, just like in crypto, we have many cycles within within the ordinal space. And I don't think it's too late for newcomers, you know, to, to come into the space and actually, you know, have good entries on stuff. Yeah, uh, of course, don't don't fumble into stuff uh, right now. But, uh, you know, I think very soon we'll get uh, good buying opportunities yeah. in the future. I don't know what you think, because I know you've been pretty much hodling since the beginning. Yeah, I agree with everything that you just said. And, you know, I'm always I'm kind of a market psychology guy, too. And this market psychology that a lot of people are looking at, they're showing up to ordinals. Yes, a lot of these projects have done, you know, well over 100x. And so you're like, shit, I'm late. And so what a lot of people end up doing is they go to cheaper projects and they go to crappier projects or they go to lesser known projects. And I think what's important to realize is holder count and community is really, really important for these projects moving forwards. So don't think that you need to buy something cheap. You should be looking at these quality projects that have already an established following um, because those are the ones that are going to have all the advocates that really move the space forwards and have the staying power. Um, and like you said, we're going to have an opportunity. These things move in cycles. They have an impulse up 
they get overheated, they need to go into reaccumulation. The reaccumulation is when it gets boring and quiet and nobody cares and everybody sick, thinks that it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, those are the best times to buy. And I think that, uh, you know, moving forwards, we're, we're going to have more than one of those, uh, those cycles take place. And we're kind of entering that one of those quiet periods right now. So it is important to start paying attention. Absolutely. Um, and I wanted to show actually to be back on what you said on bitmap, because this is pretty much one of the projects that even OG ordinal people slept on it, including myself, you know, I minted some I had like 23 bitmaps or whatever, I paid like one or two bucks each. So extremely cheap. These uh, got at some point at around 300 bucks, if uh, I'm not mistaken. Yep. And now they're down to like 200. But as you can see, for the longest time ever, they were down in the like $40 ranging. And then we had another a, a first push, then a little bit of accumulation, and then another push. And then we, we are currently correcting. And when we talk about community and holders, this one is probably one of the strongest that I see as the trend for this year. Um, it has currently 30,000 holders and this number is still growing. So this means that even at these prices, more and more people are buying uh, bitmaps. And of course, this in this number, there are many people probably like me and you that keep bitmaps in different wallets. So it's just one person having like several wallets, but still number goes up. And I do believe once this price stabilizes, I really hope it gets somewhere to like 0 0.002 where this previous range was uh, so that I personally could buy some more. Uh, but I haven't sold any of my bitmaps and I'm holding and the price appreciation is just one of the reasons for this uh, yeah. because i do believe one of the massive trends that we're going to see with bitmaps and with other collections is airdrops and we've started seeing this already like there's the saturn uh, website and project that's pretty much it's a marketplace for rare satoshis you um if you have traded on that exchange or if you are holder of certain collections including bitmaps you will be getting airdropped uh, their token, which will be called Rucked, which is a completely new, uh, you know, type of, uh, you know, token. And uh, it's, you know, a crazy ecosystem that always has something new. But this token could be big because it's a first and it's because it's going to be huge and it's going to be airdropped to pretty much uh, a lot of communities, including Bitmaps, including uh, Bitcoin Frogs, OXBT, I know also. Uh, so a lot of people will start getting a lot of free stuff, uh, especially I think during the bear markets and me personally, also without even expecting it, I'm starting to get airdrops for whatever reasons in some of my wallets. I, for example, go to my tap, uh, wallet and I see some tokens airdrop. Will they be worth something? We don't know. Uh, but you know, more and more projects are doing this and I think, just holding if you have some assets and just holding probably within several months time uh the airdrop value that you will be getting will probably outweigh uh the price depreciation that you might see in the short term yeah if we get uh you know a massive correction yeah i think uh bitmaps are they're my number one pick obviously i'm biased but uh it was pretty interesting because when the ethereum DeFi craze happened and ethereum was popping off and all the nfts were coming in i just i faded nfts because i don't care i don't mm -hmm. get it like the whole pfp thing it's really not my thing i'm a trader i like tokens i like to have i like to split my tokens into as many positions as i feel fit mm -hmm. and you can't do that with an nft obviously you can yeah. buy multiples but you, you know what i mean um yeah so i was always kind of a token guy and I never got into the PFPs, so I faded Bitcoin frogs, but mm. Bitmap was kind of something that got me really excited because it was this token standard and it was like a, a way to apply data to the blockchain and hold kind of physical properties to a digital world, which I found very interesting. So I, I definitely... Um, saw you know this is how you get programmability this is kind of a primitive that's required for smart contracts and stuff like that uh, we don't have them yet but you know we're starting to see with the dmt tokens and the the nat mm -hmm. tokens that we're getting a little bit more programmability as a result of these mm. bitmaps and yeah you know the airdrops are going to be huge uh for those who don't know one of the big problems on ethereum is um 
uh, MEV, minor extractable value. So miners can front run you on new mints. They can front run you on new token launches. They can, if they see that there's a lot of volume for a specific type of transaction, they're gonna go and do the transaction in front of you and pay a higher fee. With bitmaps, that is prevented. They can't do that because it's only available for the bitmap owner. So it's gonna be a really beautiful and elegant, simple solution for new token issuance. And we're gonna see a lot of these airdrops and these block drops as a result of these uh, bitmaps. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this one BMT, which is a BRC20 token, was I think one of the first, if not the first tokens that you are able to claim just because you hold X number of uh, bitmaps. Yeah, um, I think and that it's was very interesting. First. Yeah, yeah, um, and um, it's very interesting here on Unisat. There's not much price history, but I remember vividly when this launched. There was a period until the end of last year to claim it. Uh, not many people claimed it, uh, and some of the people really just dumped on it right away because it was free money you know some friends got like three four thousand dollars pretty much out of thin air uh, so they just dumped this token since i don't have that many bitmaps um, and i did fade bitmaps unlike you <laughs> i did get a little bit better entries on bitcoin frogs so there's many ways to to make money in the market and to yeah. obviously lose money but what i'm seeing here on the bmt is that this thing has some life you know has shown uh, some signs of strength here on the chart and it's been accumulating forever it's it hasn't gone to zero you know there is volume so if people don't know on unisat since we don't get real charts these are pretty much the charts we have to work with and they trade like nfts so every dot is a is a buy and you can see here that there is interest in this one and we're i think far away from a real uh ordinals bull market um so definitely interesting and this is just one of the tokens that yeah you know people got the early narrative for the bmp token was quite negative a lot of people thought it was kind of a bullshit project and so they dumped them you know they got their free money and they dumped them on the market but honestly that's token distribution if you have the people yeah. that believe in it now you've you know they've scooped it up from those that didn't and uh, yeah, we've been trading sideways. We haven't had like a big uptrend. So if we do have a better distribution of tokens because everybody was selling and then the narrative does flip to positive, you could absolutely see some uh, some nice upwards movement. I, I waited to the last second to claim mine. I just, yeah. they, I didn't like the vibe at first, but then they uh, introduced the ability to um, mint them from a burner wallet. And I'm like, okay, well now you're not trying to scam me. I get it now, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what uh, was also stopping me, you know, because of I hear horror stories about people getting scammed. Yeah. Uh, but I, I did decide to connect because other people did connect and claim and didn't have any issues. So I did claim it a little bit earlier. But here you can see they have almost 10,000 uh, holders currently. Um, yeah. And I think one of the benchmarks for BRC20s, except for the big boys, is OXBT. And they have, let me just double check what's their uh, holders count. You want to zoom out it's just a little bit? Zoom out? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So oh, 15,000 no, holders. One more. For OXP. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't know what's going to happen. That's the, the beauty of it. But definitely I'm holding most of my stuff, even though I sold some, uh, you know, when we were peaking at, uh, for, for example, half a Bitcoin for bitcoin frog uh, i did sell some stuff but i'm keeping most of it just because of airdrops like this one um and speaking of uh, another trend that you mentioned the nat tokens that's that's been getting really hot recently yeah um do do we do you want to explain like what are nat tokens before we get into sure YD yeah Pacific? so nat tokens it stands for non-arbitrary token so it's a new way to issue tokens like on for example on the ethereum network anybody can launch a token it's very easy to launch a token on the ethereum network and typically you will have a set amount you'll have a max supply that you just think of you, i want a billion tokens i want a thousand tokens it you get to choose it doesn't matter but what nat tokens are doing is they are um looking for 
patterns in the Bitcoin blocks, whether it is the amount of bits, whether it is the amount of transactions, whether it's the amount of transactions over a certain value, maybe it's the amount of coins that were transferred total. Um, there's a lot of different little bits of data that you can pull from the Bitcoin block itself. And what NAT tokens is they're leveraging that data to do token is issuance. So we already have two tokens. Uh, well, there's there's more, but there's two that have kind of uh, are quite popular right now. One just minted uh, yesterday, and that's called Baked Token. And whatever they're referencing is creating a very, very small supply. It's a very small supply. So you've got a small supply token. And then the other one is uh, NAT, NAT token, which is the first NAT token, which has a massive supply. So you can tweak different variables by referencing the blocks to get a different supply or a different characteristic to your uh, token project. And it's important because it, it creates this non-arbitrary approach to token issuance, which means that uh, you get, you, you kind of blame the, the creators less, I guess, because it's not them, it's mm. Bitcoin. This is what, these are the transactions that are being created. You know, if it's inflationary too much, well, you know, whatever. If it's too deflationary, whatever, it's Bitcoin. It's, it's the users of Bitcoin that are creating this issuance schedule. So I find it quite interesting. It's very unique. No other token has ever done anything like this before. And I'm a big fan of firsts. Yes. And speaking of first, actually, and why I also quite like NAT in general, is that there's also like a very clear trend that was established last year, which I believe will continue this year. And I kind of call it the Holy Trinity. So it's the first of something. So like NAT is the first NAT token. It's the same name. So that's why we pronounce it several times. But uh, so it's a first of something. It's unique. You know, it's a non-arbitrary token. So uh, as you said, there's no founder behind that decided this is the supply. And then it was free to mint. So these three yeah. things for me are like the holy trinity. And that's what the entire Ornos community is looking for. Not yeah. that, you know, projects that you pay for are not going to do well, but these can do extremely well because some of the best returners in the space have been these type of free mints unique of for some reason or another. NAT is obviously one of them. Another one in this category, I can say uh, CBRCs, which is another token standard with you know their own ecosystem and so on. Um, but I think if you find a project and if you find like uh, a niche within Ordinals, because we're so new in the space and there's so many developments and people just really um, you know unleash their creativity of what is possible, I think finding those first unique opportunities, free to mint, best case scenarios, uh, they could give you the best returns. Bitmaps falls under this category, you know, NATs, which is kind of based on bitmaps and all dealers we we already mentioned. Yeah. And it's in interesting that even now, uh, what I'm seeing with collections is if they have some kind of hint of it's an early inscription, so the first of something. Again, there's uh, immediately more interest than something that is just a meme collection or a copycat collection or something like this. So definitely, yeah. uh, even on the JPEG side, I think uh, there's a lot to to get into it. Yeah, I think all of those factors are are very part of the current ordinal culture. Um, you know, the free to mint specifically. I I saw a PFP project that had a mint price on ordinals the other day and i'm like oh you guys that's that's a big mistake <laughs> that's not gonna work <laughs> like bitcoiners don't yeah. like to contribute to vc coffers we this is a free ecosystem and it's one of the most pure yeah. uh venture capital ecosystems that exists right now because everything is free even the founders need to yeah. inscribe they have to it's it's a very it's the appropriate way to do things, um, I think. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's pretty uh, exciting. So those are good tips for looking for new projects. Yeah. I believe that would start changing. And actually, we see this uh, with Node Monkeys. You know, I faded them really hard. I didn't want to participate in their Dutch so did I. Um, And they pumped quite a lot from, from there. Uh, I think 0 0.3 was 
the sell out price or 0 0.03 was uh, the sell price. They pumped 10x from there uh, at the top yeah. here. They made crazy volume, crazy volume, like the biggest volume we've ever seen on Ornos. Um, and they made on the back of it more than 10 million bucks. Plus, they kept like 2,000 of the supply of the collection. So a lot of a lot of money on the site also for this. And I totally faded them uh, because of this meta that is, I don't know how much money you want for this, you know, and all the mistakes they did during the process of, uh, you know, launching the collection. But I'm also seeing this with uh, the wizards, with the Taproot wizards. They're taking their time to launch. Um, and now I see, I, just today I saw that they're going to be launching a, a, another collection, which is actually going to be before the actual collection that they are. Um, and I know that there are VC money involved in Taproot Wizards. And for me, without even knowing the details, it feels like they're looking for to make more money from a collection yeah. that nobody asked for, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so definitely the tides are starting to shift, but I think the OG guys will still uh, respect. And especially for newcomers, you wouldn't want to spend like 10K uh, dollars for something, no. you could rather find, grind the discords, find the opportunities and make some free mints. Yeah. Much. Yeah. Yeah. It'll see. We'll, we'll see. The current meta definitely is, you know, free mints are the way to go, but there are a few outliers and we'll see how they uh, perform. Yeah. Um, actually, um, speaking about free stuff and uh, Nat ecosystem going back, the, the second token baked uh, that came out. You can see here uh, on Ornos Wallet where you can trade these things, which is just a terrible web website and interface for now. But Nat, since it launched, it has like almost uh, 1,700 sales and 21 Bitcoin in volume, 22 Bitcoin in volume. And wow. Baked, which That's nuts. pretty much, yes. Uh, baked minted out the same day. So it was a very low supply. This one is uh, 34,000 tokens or something like this. Um, and I aped quite a bit into it. I spent probably like 800 bucks minting this thing. I got like yeah. 150 of them. Um, and you can see here the difference in volume. So right. only 34 sales. The price is dropping ever since it launched. I'm still sitting on a 2x even at these prices. Mm -hmm. uh, so people still make money on the free mint stuff. Uh, but first is first and unique is unique. Uh, definitely has more steam power. Yeah. In my opinion. And supply. You know, yeah. when you when people can buy a million of something, they yeah. love it. When they buy a, a couple, they're like, eh, I don't know. I want to buy a yeah. million of these things. <laughs> and the, yeah, the, uh... the one thing going for Nat is that you buy billions of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not even millions. So it's like, uh, it's pretty yeah. much like a meme coin. Yeah. Um, another one that I believe uh, would be a, a great trend um, and definitely not to being slept on is the entire track ecosystem. Um, and since we're here on Nordnos Wallet, I can show you GIP has been one of the best selling tokens on the entire um, Ordnos Wallet website. And I don't think we even really know what it does yet. I think they've Nobody talked knows. about it, but a lot of it was over my head or it's like, it's gonna do something that hasn't been released yet or a feature that doesn't exist yet, but yeah, yeah, its volume has been insane. Its rally has been absolutely insane. I shared it with my group and I said, guys, this doesn't do anything, but I'm minting it. But and uh, it. everybody that did it <laughs> has been uh, I have a, quite happy. I have a, crazy, I have a crazy story with this one since, um, you know, on the day of the whole GIP frenzy, because this thing was minting for like months and nobody cared about. Yeah. And once uh, several communities got in, into it, you know, it minted out pretty much for a few hours and I managed to mint like 500,000 of these mm -hmm. and I went for another 500,000, but oh, nice. my transaction was slow and I needed to go out because I had to go play uh, football or as Americans call it soccer. Yeah. And it turned out my transaction went through somewhere in the middle of the game that we had and I didn't manage to do the rest of the steps so I can claim the second mm. 500,000. So this turned out to be the most expensive uh, mistake uh, sporting event I had. In, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I missed on. Uh, Did you win? Yeah. Did you guys I, win? I don't remember. Honestly, I <laughs> <You're> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't care less. Else. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this one, I think, has staying power just because of the meme mobility. Everybody in the, the track Discord talks about it yeah. every day. Um, I think Benny the Deaf, which is another like trend on his own because he's the guy indexing all the stuff. Uh, like, for example, the, the NAT stuff he's indexing, he is behind track and tap, which is a token standard within the track ecosystem. They also have pipe. Um, I know they got some funding around $4 million, if I'm not mistaken. So things are starting to get serious here. Um, yeah. They will potentially do an airdrop uh, for track holders. And actually one of the you know speculation is that also gip holders will get some tap as an airdrop mm. um and, and that's why i'm personally holding most of my back still um and i do believe like if you want to get into something and you don't want to buy illiquid jpegs i would definitely say go for the track token slash tap yeah yeah tokens. and uh if you're new to ordinals and you're not in the track discord that is a it's a must you have to get into the track discord Absolutely. if you've never done discord before doesn't matter. Go do Discord. Get into the track Discord. If you have any interest in anything ordinals, any uh, inscription tokens or any of that stuff, uh, you would be doing yourself a huge disservice by not being in that Discord. Absolutely. And luckily, actually, for track, we do have some charts to work with because it got listed very early on Gate.io. Uh, did you did you mint any track? I didn't. I got to it late. I mean, late, but we oh, started uh, paying attention to it to, at around 30 cents. So we only oh, have right. a, a, a 10x right now. <laughs> only. I remember looking at this breakout. I didn't mint any. I was looking at this initial breakout. Uh, didn't get an entry. Beat it myself to death for this. Then I um, managed to average in around 40 cents. So I was buying somewhere around here. Yeah. Same um, as me. And a little bit higher. Yeah. So yeah. our uh, average cost was around 40 cents. And then this thing just flew out. Yeah. I took up my cost basis only, uh, probably somewhere around here. And I'm still yeah. holding all of it. Um, and even after this price action, this is at around $100 million market cap. Yeah. And it's the next in line to be listed on major exchanges. Rumored. Yeah. Nothing is. I think, you know, on its merits alone, too, which is very unique. What a lot of people don't realize with these token projects is they usually need to pay a lot of money, like yeah. new tokens that are going to be listed on Binance. The project founders need to pay to get listed. Uh, track is not paying any exchange to get listed at all. Benny's made it pretty clear. Like, we're just going to keep on doing this. You can buy it decentralized on these marketplaces or, you know, somebody's going to list us. And mm. this is without a doubt going to get listed on all, all the major exchanges on merits alone. This is a very important infrastructure project. And uh, Benny is a freak. <laughs> he is the hardest is. working dev I have ever seen in my life. Uh, the insane. last team that I saw that worked as hard, uh, even like just 10% as hard as Benny was the Olympus DAO, uh, discord and those devs that didn't turn out, but, um, those devs were incredibly active and Benny is like the entire Olympus DAO team, but it's one guy. He is nuts. Yeah. He is nuts how fast yeah. he develops. Absolutely. And the funny part is that he still spends time in the Discord All answering day. new questions. <laughs> it's I, like, it's a freaking I have, nature. I don't know how he does it. I I Because the second transaction on the GIP story that I gave you, I was supposed to get like a refund. They called me a scammer because I actually got the first, uh, you know, transfer. Uh, but then I texted him, D I DM'd Benny, yeah. which is at that stage, he was already super busy. And he's like, yeah, okay, send me an address. And he sent me like my 200 bucks back. And I was like, yeah, like, it's I just want to give him back. It's, it's, he incredible. is, uh, yeah, he's a, a very, very valuable piece of the entire ordinal ecosystem. Not one guy. He's a superhero. <laughs> Absolutely. And what I could advise people if they don't know this, um, you can buy on Gate.io track but i would definitely advise go and buy it on unisat yeah uh or if you buy it on gate because of you know might be cheaper and so just put it in a wallet like an xverse or a unisat because these wallets will 
qualify for the tap potential airdrop because it hasn't right. been confirmed but pretty much yeah um, it's kind of guaranteed that we're going to get some so definitely if you decide to enter i don't think uh you're better with charts than me i don't think it's probably the best time to enter i would wait for a bit more to for price to drop my personal target to add some is around mid uh three dollars uh but i think everybody should has at least some track yeah yeah i've been telling people you know when you discover these assets and you're you're wanting to FOMO in, I'm sure we're causing a lot of people to FOMO. So let me tell you how to handle FOMO. Yeah. <laughs> probe yeah. positions. Probe positions yeah. are very, it's a very good strategy. It's low risk. It is a small amount that you do not care about. But what you're doing is you're paying mm. for attention. You're going to start paying attention to the asset. And when you see those okay. dips, you're going to be liquid. You're going to be ready. You're going to be set up. You're going to know what to do. And you're going to be able to capitalize on those dips. So I've been telling people at these prices, it is okay to do a pro position on track. And then you're going to be paying for that attention. Um, the easy way, like we mentioned, is to buy on an exchange. It's available on Gate.io. It's available on OKX. It's starting to be available on more exchanges. But I will also echo the fact that it is better for you not only for the airdrop to have it on a wallet that you control, but it's just better to start learning about ordinals and these these marketplaces like Unisat and Ordinals Wallet and Magic Eden, I think will benefit you as a Bitcoiner um, to learn about these types of transactions as opposed to just doing all of your activities on a centralized service. 100%. And just to piggyback on what you said, before we knew actually that there will be a pump on track because these things were very new it kind of looks obvious now but look at the godly pump that we had and since i fucked up the entry i was like behind on a five six six yeah and i was like damn i missed this you know i i, I wanted to get in and i did i actually bought somewhere i don't know somewhere here near the top like 60 cents or something but then i averaged down since i yeah. have the conviction of this and I didn't put, you know, all of my money into this price action right here. Although, as you can see, it, it was a good entry at the end of the day. But at the moment, it wasn't a good entry. Uh, but it kept my FOMO in check when I had yeah. some some size. Exactly. Trading is all yes. about emotion. If you are FOMOing yeah. in, wanting to go all in at a top, it's usually that point where you want to FOMO in. It's a top. Just tell yeah. yourself... I'm going to get a little bit of exposure and you're going to be so glad that you did because it's just going to, it's going to level your emotions right out and you'll be able yeah. to make better decisions. 100% on every single thing that I wanted to buy and I felt FOMO or I don't, I wouldn't even call it FOMO for the people that don't want to trade actively. But the fact that you're like, I want to get something of this, like a token or a JPEG, whatever, the moment I've had this feeling very strong, it has always been like, okay, this is the top <laughs> yeah. and I've lost money every time I've done stupid yeah. things like this and buying heavy. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, I have a couple of uh, more trends. Actually, sure. one is re related to, to track and I think um, it's also a big one. And I, I realize that we're giving a lot of info here and I wouldn't say, you know, go try and catch all of these moves and all of these trends, but, you know, pick, pick your poison. Um, and decides if you want to, you know, do this or not. Yeah. Uh, and, or which one you want to do or you don't want to do and so on. Um, Unisat, it's been actually, I don't know if you see this already, mm -hmm. but they've been working on the BRC20 swap function. Yeah. Uh, which pretty much means this will become like the first major DEX for the ordinal space overall. There are some, but they're they don't have the liquidity yeah so i'll be we're able waiting to waiting for that uh it's this is our uniswap moment we're yes. waiting for this to be liquid and popular because this will be the main point where everything else kind of branches out absolutely so unisat have been working on this behind the scenes and now recently i started seeing that i can also access this and i didn't have access to the pre-launch version or whatever you need to have certain number of points on this wallet. I don't have them, uh, but on the other side, do and I do have the option to swap different BRCs. Um, and this is, I think, just the tip of the iceberg because currently 
Um, if you don't know, there's like a race for DeFi on Bitcoin. There are a bunch yeah. of projects working on this. Uh, Tapex is one. Uh, even CBRC people have exchanges. They also currently are quite crappy, but are working on this to kind of find a way for liquidity to come in and to consolidate. And from then, potentially, maybe we even have a stable coin. I know projects like Ghostly, they're working on this together with Track um, and bridging also, you know, yeah. uh, bridging assets from Ethereum to uh, to Bitcoin. And like the entire DeFi ecosystem is currently uh, being built on Bitcoin. We don't know which one's going to be the winners. I think Unisat stands a good chance to be a winner be just because they already have the attention and the volume for the BRC20. Um, but definitely look for this and look for, you know, the people that develop like Benny. Um, I would say maybe the CBRC guys. I don't know if you want to mention anybody else that's like a strong developer in the space. Maybe the Saturn guys. Uh, but just keep track of what they're doing and if they come out with with good products that can introduce liquidity into the entire ecosystem. Yeah. So the trends we've talked about today were already existing coins, but this brings up a really good point that some of the biggest trends of 2024 don't exist yet. So do yeah. keep an eye out for these automated market makers because they don't exist yet. And when the automated market maker ecosystem begins to develop, we're going to see everything we saw on Ethereum last cycle begin to happen again on Bitcoin. As soon as the, uh, the AMM is created, now we have swaps in a decentralized, trustless way. We have liquidity pools. That leads to stable coins. That leads to full-on DeFi on Bitcoin. So, Absolutely. you know, we've talked about some pretty solid projects and some pretty good trends, but there is going to be other ones as well. And to your point about, you know, not having exposure to all to too many things, um, I do want you guys, you know, if you do decide to get exposure to any of these things, be very selective for multiple reasons. It's hard to manage a ton of positions. If you if you're, you know, if you're going into all of these things, you're going to look at your portfolio and you're going to realize, holy crap, I got like 20 different, maybe even 30. If you're a complete degenerate, 50 different assets that you need to manage. And that is very difficult to do, not only mentally, but logistically, it's hard with all of the wallets, it's hard with all of the transactions. And keep in mind that as Bitcoin, uh, you know, goes up in value, and we see a lot of these projects begin to prosper on on Bitcoin DeFi, fees are going to get really high. So you got to keep into consideration that if you have a ton of projects, you're going to have a ton of transactions, and that can really eat away at your portfolio um, when Bitcoin fees are very high. So be very selective. There's a lot of opportunity in this space, but be very selective. You don't have to have exposure to everything. Absolutely. I'm actually in the same process because the space is extremely dynamic. And I mean, if you think like boomer crypto, as I call it, is dynamic, this like ordinal space is absolutely crazy. Um, and just the other day, I went through my positions and what should have could have done um and i decided to position myself uh, into quite a bit of collections some of them were cheaper some of them you know like bitcoin whales i have uh, doge punks all kinds of collections in my portfolio most of them did like two or three x and that's on a very cheap collection so the initial entry was let's say 100 bucks uh, for some of them and they went to like two, three hundred bucks. And if I have just decided to invest that same money, which wasn't that much at that time because we were down here in the bear market. If I decided to put these like two thousand, three thousand bucks into just one or two more Bitcoin frogs, which was obvious choice. It was yeah. it ha already had a cycle. You know, Magic Eden doesn't have the history here. But they already pumped a bit before this and they dropped and they accumulated. If I just have bought a few frogs here instead of all dealers, I would have made 10x my money. So yeah. I would have sold the two or three K invested in frogs for fifty thousand probably. Yeah. Because one frog at the top was like 20, 25 bucks. 25. Yeah. I think we're we're still in that part of the cycle. I do a lot of comparison cycle to cycle. So, you know, Bitcoin frogs for me. 
from the last cycle point of view is almost the crypto punks or the board ape yacht club and we're still in that part of the cycle where you would be able to comfortably afford a board ape or a crypto punk in my opinion so these frogs like i i think they're going to go to a bitcoin maybe even a few bitcoin per frog not financial advice this is just you know of course being that i've been in the space for so long i've seen craziness happen it sounds crazy but to say you know a bitcoin frog is going to be worth multiple bitcoin but i've seen it i've seen it you know this this stuff happens and uh yeah it's uh you can still buy quality projects that are going to be like the blue chips for this cycle and i think bitcoin frogs is one Uh, i don't even have one i gotta get one (laughs) yeah so obviously not financial advice i'm just gonna tell you what i'm planning to do but you can see here the first wave you can see this chart fully right yeah so this was the first wave this was somewhere in may and the price got up to like 0.0 something i don't remember i'm gonna lie Uh, but you can see the pump here and the volume that we had and then on the back of this i started buying frogs at 0.09 or something uh something like this and then price dropped like 70 percent from there but I kept averaging in because, yeah. you know, I like the project. I actually should have waited a bit more because I was maxing out of my position sizing somewhere around here. And I should have bought more here in the, you know, the dark times, as I call yeah. them. But as you can see here, you have this massive pump now, which got us to uh, 0.5 of Bitcoin. Yeah. Insane. And now we're dropping. And I guess we're going to get to like 0.1. This is yeah. This is my that would be that would be a really good spot. I agree with you from a technical point of view. I agree with you from a fundamental point of view. I think point one would be a fantastic buy. I think that'll be a a, an area that's well defended as well. I don't see us going below point one. Yeah, and just for reference, since you mentioned the board apes, and I do believe they have some similarities. um, I don't know how to stretch this chart personally. But you can see here that right in the beginning, this was uh, somewhere around five Ethereum, which wasn't that expensive at that time. You know, these traded also at 0.4 Ethereum. But, you know, anyway, then we had an initial push. Then they went to like, uh, I don't know if you can see this here, but it mm-hmm. went to like 20, 12 or 13 Ethereum. Then they slowed down. Then they pumped again. Then again the floor was higher and it never dropped and then again uh so i do think we might see something like this too um that we don't really get a nice really big washout yeah uh but i think uh, we're gonna get it i personally i'm betting that we're gonna get it so that's why i haven't really bought any of my frogs back that i sold already mm-hmm. i agree yeah and maybe just one last thing because um uh, we've been talking for <laughs> quite a long period already, but just one last alpha I want to give for this year is this is called Runes. Uh, this is another token standard, which will be a UTXO based token, which in short means that you'll be able to transfer and trade it like you do Bitcoin. Uh, you don't have to inscribe a transfer, send a transfer file, decide how much you want to inscribe, you know, all the really painful things we need to go through with most other tokens and the big thing with runes is not that it's a utxo token but it that it's launched as a standard by the creator of ornos casey mm. um it's it's more like a joke for now he wasn't really serious a few months ago but we're starting to see uh stuff on the ord client that there's a test net people can go and play around with it and stuff like this so potentially in april somewhere around the halving uh, from what i know is the launch day of these rules and if people can get their hands on them cheaply i think this also will be a yeah. really good play yeah cool i think we'll uh close things out there um really good content good conversation i i agree with pretty much uh everything you said i think that uh you know if you're not in or please don't fade ordinals anymore Guys, if you've been sitting on the sidelines, now is a very advantageous time because things have cooled off 
It's less FOMO yeah. right now. It's good. That's what you want to see. The mempool isn't on fire anymore. It's things are cooling off. So it's it's a time to start paying attention, planning, getting these wallets. Uh, you know, the Unisat wallet or the X First wallet. Get that stuff set up. Um, where can people find you to uh, keep in touch? Well, I'm a fellow YouTuber. Um, Zlat Crypto is my channel, so that's where I post my main content. I don't have time for all the other stuff like Twitter. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the crazy hundred thousands of uh, social media. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in Ornos and some crypto, you can find me there. And I'll have his uh, uh, channel linked below. So do go over there, subscribe. Uh, he puts out a lot of ordinal based content. And I think his opinion is uh, is very, he's dialed in. I think, you know, a lot of people can get a little too degen. You've got a good balance. I think you're in quality projects. You're paying attention to the quality stuff. And uh, yeah, give him a follow for sure. All right. That is all the time we've got for today. So thank you all for joining in. And uh, just as a reminder, let's uh, uh, check out the links down below for your free Bitcoin trading bot. You know, let the bot trade Bitcoin for you so you can focus on uh, ordinals and all the other fun stuff that's happening in the market. It is a free bot, um, takes five minutes to set up and uh, click the join community tab as well and uh, pop into our discord. Come say hi, come hang out and ask us uh, questions about wallets, inscriptions, whatever you want. We're hanging out there all the time and uh, it's usually a faster way to get in contact with me. Um, until then, please trade safe. It is a jungle out there. Bye, everybody.